In this video, I'm going to give an introduction to Async API from the perspective of a Kafka developer. What I mean is, uh, I'm assuming that you're a Kafka developer. You've got an application that is producing or consuming messages with a Kafka topic, and you want to describe what your application is doing and how it's using Kafka. Now, if you're not sure why you might want to do that, we do have a post that covers in, that in a bit more detail and gives some of the reasons why you should do it and some of the benefits from doing that. So I won't cover that in this video, but I will put a link to where this post is uh, at the bottom. So you can go and look at that later if you want. But what I'm going to do is assume that you've decided you want to do this and you're looking for information on how to get started. So this is an example async API spec. Um, you can see a link to it if you want to look at it in more detail. The link's at the bottom, ibm.biz slash api dash sample. And in this spec, it describes a pretend application that is producing and consuming messages, um, capturing the movement of stock between a few warehouses. So what I'm going to do in this video is take you through this example spec, pick out the different sections of it, uh, and explain what each section is for. Because as you can see, it's a YAML document. So the structure is quite clear. And I'll leave this um, sort of map of the structure on the left-hand side as I go through to help you keep in mind roughly where we are in the document. So with that in mind, let's get started. Um, first, at the top, we have the async API line. That's how you know that this is an async API spec. And the number is the version of the spec that you're using. So here I'm using the, the latest version 2.0.0. Next, you provide the unique ID for this particular spec document. So you can use a URN like I've used here. Uh, you can use a URL or really any unique string is fine. Next, the info section. Now here is where you provide some background. You provide some context. This is your place to set the scene for any other developers that are going to pick this spec up to explain to them what your application is for, what it's doing, and how it's using Kafka. You've got a space to give your spec a title. Uh, you can version control the spec, uh, semantic versioning. And you've got this description. And this description field uh, is where you can provide all that background and all that detail. It supports markdown, so you can use rich formatting. You can use links and images and all of that sort of stuff. Finally, there's lots of spaces for you to link to more information. So you can give, for example, contact details. So if there's a developer picking up the spec who has more questions or they want to clarify something, you can. Uh, there's a space in the spec for you to tell them how to get in touch with you. Next, tags. Now, once you have more than a few of these specs, you're going to want to start thinking about how you group them and how you organize them. There's a space in the, the spec for tags, which you can use to help with that. Next, external doc. So if your application that you're describing in this spec is part of some broader application or there's some other site with more documentation or more information about it, uh, there's a space to put a link to, to that documentation here. So now you've set the scene. You've given some context. You've explained what this application is for. Um, next, you need to give information about the Kafka cluster itself. So this is where you'll, you'll tell developers who pick up the spec for when they're writing an application to interact with your app, um, what Kafka cluster should they connect to and how should they do that? Now, a brief aside, uh, Async API can be used to describe more than just Kafka. It can be used to describe all sorts of protocols like MQTT or um, J JMS or MQP and, and many more. Um, so sometimes the terminology that's used in the spec isn't an exact match for what you might be used to with Kafka. So what Kafka describes as brokers, async API calls servers. I mean, obviously, that's close enough that this won't cause you any problem. So for each of these, you're providing the URL for each of your brokers. And typically, what will happen is uh, things like code generators will create a bootstrap address by just combining each of the URLs from all the brokers that you list here. Um, so if you're using uh, something, if you're using a single bootstrap address already, you know, maybe your Kafka cluster is behind some sort of uh, load balancer or router, um, then you can just provide that one address. You don't have to identify each separate broker. Notice that there's a space to identify that what we're talking about here is Kafka. Uh, this protocol Kafka in, in the brokers, in the servers, that's how we know that this spec is being used to describe Kafka as opposed to all the other protocols that Async API can describe. So we've set the scene in the info section. We've given connection information. Now we describe um, the topics that our application is using. 
Now, again, there's um, a, a brief terminology point here. Um, Async API has settled on channels um, as a way of describing what in Kafka we think of as topics. So if you see references to channels, what we're talking about are Kafka topics. So here you have a list of all of the topics that the application is using. Uh, and they're listed by the name of the topic. So you can see here that I, my application is using a topic called central.warehouse. Uh, as well as giving the name of the topic, I've got a place to provide a description. And again, it supports Markdown. So I can give some background and some narrative and I can set the scene for how my application is using this particular topic and what it's using it for. Next, um, you list the operations that applications can use to interact with your application. Um, now, we'll write another post that goes into a bit more detail of exactly how uh, Publish and Subscribe maps to what we think of in Kafka. But for now, um, what we're talking about is for when the developer picks up your spec and is writing an application that can interact with yours, should it subscribe to, uh, should it consume the messages that your application produces? Or is it going to be producing messages for your application? Um, so that's, and you describe this as either a subscribe or a publish operation. So for each operation, first you give it uh, an ID. Giving it a unique ID is really useful for uh, some of the tools that you might want to use your async API spec with, like code generators. Next, you provide bindings. Now bindings is what async API uses when it wants to provide protocol specific information. So if when you're writing this spec, you want to provide some Kafka specific details for developers who pick this spec up um, about how their application should be configured when they consume or produce messages, um, here's where you put it. So you can put things like the client ID that they should use and, or the consumer group ID that they should use. And either you can give it sort of the explicit specific strings that it should use, or you can see here, you know, I've provided a regular expression because I want to describe the constraints that, that I have, but not give the actual client ID that a developer should use. So after the bindings, you describe the actual messages that your application is using. At the top, there's space for you to provide context and background again. So a title for this type of message, a brief one-line summary of what this message is for, and then a more detailed description, again, supporting Markdown, so you can provide as much detail as is necessary to help a developer who picks up this spec understand what these messages are for. Next, we have space to provide information about headers. All the headers that your application might be using, you can list the, the name, the key for each header, uh, provide a description of how your application is using this header and what type of data is going to be the value of this header. Next, you can describe the message payload. So you can describe in detail each of the fields that's going to be in your in the body of the messages that this application is, is using. Um, for each uh, item, you can just provide a description of what this key, what this value is for. You can say the data type, um, quite detailed. You can specify whether each field is required or optional. So you can describe exactly what is going to be in the messages that are on the topics for this application. Next, you can provide some bindings. Now, remember what I said before. Bindings is where Async API puts protocol-specific, Kafka-specific information. So here, for example, um, my application may be uh, the ordering of messages for each type of stock movement is really important. So I might be using message keys to enforce the ordering uh, how I want it. So that's a really important characteristic of my application. So I have a place to describe that in the spec by putting that in the binding section for the message. I say that I've got a key and the key is always going to be one of these. Finally, I have a place to give some examples. It's really useful to give a detailed description of every individual field in a message, but it's useful to give developers who pick up the spec something of just when it's all brought together, this is what it can look like. And you can provide multiple examples if you want of different uh, ways that this particular message schema could pan out. So that is all the information for a particular channel. I'll show you a couple more topics, a couple more channels, so that you can see some of the different ways you can use the async API spec. So that was the central.warehouse topic. My next topic is called west.warehouse. And again, I have a place to provide background and context and description with Markdown if I want to format it nicely. So now, now I describe how to interact with my application using the west.warehouse topic by describing what operations you should use.
Uh, so you can see here I've got a subscribe. And then I can provide the, the protocol specific bindings information of how applications should be configured. Now, when I showed you that on the last topic, I had all the bindings uh, information in line uh, as part of the spec. But you don't have to do it that way. You can uh, put all of those informations down at the bottom and then uh, link to it by reference. And that's what that dollar ref uh, syntax means. It means it's a reference to later on in the spec. So the how this application should be configured, the consumer settings, is down here. And again, it's the same information as I was showing before. It's a place to describe things like the Kafka client ID or the consumer group ID, either by giving exactly what it should be or just by describing uh, the constraints using a, like for example here, I've got a regular expression. Next, you can describe the messages that this application is expecting. Um, so you can see here, I've got a message section. And again, where before I showed you the message schema all in line as part of the channel, as part of the topic information. Instead for this channel, for this topic, um, I've put it at the bottom and I'm using this dollar $f syntax to uh, link to it by reference. So down here, I've got the definition of this message and it's the same kind of information I showed before. A title, a brief online summary, a detailed description using Markdown, uh, a list of all the headers that the, the application uh, is using, and a detailed description of the message payload. All of the fields in the message, what data types they are, um, whether they're required or optional. A space for protocol specific information. So for example, in Kafka, we're talking about things like the message key. And then finally, a set of examples of what messages can look like. So that means that adding an individual topic can be quite short. And that's really useful if your application is using multiple topics in a very similar way. To save you having to copy paste chunks of schema and then maintain it in multiple places, uh, each topic definition you can see here is only about 10 lines when I do it like this. So when I look at my next topic, the east.warehouse topic that my application is using, in a really similar way, you can see I can just uh, link to the same bits of schema. So if I run through this quickly, I've got the name of my topic, east.warehouse, a high level description of what it's for, a description of the operations for how to interact with my application. So here you should um, subscribe and information about the Kafka specific uh, configuration for how applications should be configured. So that's the things like the client ID and the consumer group ID. And then finally, information about the message. So what messages this application is expecting. Uh, a description of what they're for, high level sort of background, and headers and payload. I'll give one last example, um, the temperature topic. I wanna to show one slightly uh, last different way of using async API. So again, I've, I start with my topic name up the top, and then I have a description of what this topic is being used for. I have a description of the operation for how to interact with my application. And again, uh, we will have a later post that describes in detail how publish and subscribe are used, but for now, we're talking about consuming and producing. So we have a space for Kafka specific information. So you've got a space for this is configuring the application to do this operation. So it's the things like the Kafka client ID. And now a description of the message. So I'm gonna start similar to before. I've got sort of a high level description. I've got a space to provide Kafka specific bindings. But what I've done differently here is for the payload. Now I've mentioned before that you can use this $ref syntax to refer to where the schema is uh, somewhere else. And in all the examples I've shown so far, all those examples I'm referring to using $ref are at the bottom of the same document. Now they don't have to be. You can use $ref to um, refer to some external resource, and that's what I'm doing here. Now what that's particularly useful for is if, if you've been a Kafka developer for a while, you have probably heard of Apache Avro. It's a very common way of uh, defining message body schemas in Kafka. Uh, and you've probably also heard of using a schema registry as a repository for storing your message schemas. Uh, and there are lots of client libraries for Kafka that know how to retrieve dynamically at runtime to retrieve an Avro schema from a schema registry and serialize and deserialize message from the Kafka topic on the fly. So you don't have to worry about how to do serialization in your application. So that's uh, a really common practice in Kafka and a really useful thing to be doing. Uh, so I wanted to show you if you're doing that, how to describe that in async API. So you can see here I've got in the schema format field, 
I've got a reference to Apache Avro. So that's how you say that for this, for messages on this topic, we're using Avro uh, as a serialization and deserialization technology. And because Avro has different ways of serializing messages, you can serialize to JSON or you can do binary serialization. The content type is how you identify that. So you can see here I'm using binary serialization because it's got octet stream as the content type. Finally, um, it's got a place. Now, if you want to copy paste your Avro schema definition into your async API spec, you can. That is perfectly valid. But then what that does mean is that you're going to be maintaining that schema in two separate places, both in your schema registry and in your uh, async API spec. So what you can do is refer to your Avro schema by reference, um, which is what I'm doing here. So if you go to this URL, you'll see I've got a really simple Avro schema. Um, so I don't have to duplicate it and I don't have to maintain it in two separate places. Obviously, this isn't a real schema registry. I'm using a GitHub gist as kind of like a stand-in pretend schema registry, but the principle I hope you see is still the same. Uh, and finally, um, there's a space for examples. Um, so just one last quick point on Avro. So using Avro is still very useful and valid, as I was mentioning before. Where I think Async API isn't trying to replace it, but rather complements it, because it provides a lot of information that you can't capture in an Async API. Uh, sorry, Async API provides a lot of additional information that you can't describe in Avro. Things like what should go on the message headers, things like what the message key should be, um, things like uh, how the Kafka client should be configured, like the consumer group ID or the client ID, uh, information about where the Kafka cluster is, uh, you know, the connection information for the bootstrap address, and just all the descriptions and info fields throughout the spec that provide that background and context and scene setting. There's a lot of really useful information for the developer in the async API spec that isn't covered in Avro itself. So I would say that using the two together, they complement each other really nicely without having to duplicate, because as you can see, you can sort of just refer to where you've used Avro to describe payloads. So now we have reached the bottom. We've, we've already talked about components. This is where you can put uh, reusable specs, uh, reusable chunks of, of schema that you can refer to earlier on in the document. And I've, we've already looked at each of the bits here before. So that is an async API spec. Um, there are four main sections that I've tried to describe. Firstly, it has a place to provide background, context, scene setting. You use that info section to describe what your application is, what it's doing, how it's using Kafka. You use the server section to describe where your Kafka cluster is, how to connect to it, how to interact with your application, um, you know, what Kafka cluster should someone connect their application to. Channels is where you describe all the topics that your application is using. Um, and as well as sort of providing a high level description of the topics, you can describe in detail exactly how messages on this topic will look, what the headers are, what the key is, what the message payload looks like. You can provide descriptions, you can provide examples. Finally, uh, components. Um, you can refer to uh, bits of schema e throughout the other parts of the document that are kept either later on in the document in a component section, or you can refer to external resources. And in particular, that one example I showed you is where you can use that to refer to schemas in a schema registry. And that is Async API from the perspective of a Kafka developer.